Hey there, AP Pre-Calc. Let's look at lesson 2.9. We're going to talk about logarithmic expressions today. This should be a general review of log expressions from your previous course. Here's our basic properties of logs that we should be familiar with. Log base b of 1 is equal to 0. Log base b of b is 1. Log base b of b to the y is just y, and b raised to the log base b of b is x. Those properties hold true for natural log as well. We know that the general rule states that if a base is raised to a power, that result is a number. And that's a biconditional statement so that log base b of a number gives us the power. So a base to a power gives a number, and this is the base, this is the number. So we know that a logarithm is a power. A log is a power. Let's use that basic definition to rewrite each one of these expressions. Log base 2 of 8 is 3 because 2 raised to the third power produces 8. Three, log base 3 of the square root of 3 is a half because 3 raised to the 1 half power will produce the square root of 3. And 5 raised to the negative 2 power is the same as saying 1 over 5 squared, and 1 over 5 squared is where we get that 1 over 25 statement. So log base 5 of 1 25th is negative 2 since negative 2 is the power. And here this one is the common log. <clears throat> log 10 equals 1 just means that the base is 10, so 10 raised to the first power is going to be 10. The base here understood is to be 10. And 6 raised to the log base 6 of 11 power is equal to 11 because log base 6 of 11 is equal to log base 6 of 11. If I rewrite this base as log base 6 to the 11th power, I'll get this power. A logarithm is a power. In example two, we're working the other way. We want to write the exponential form as a logarithmic equation. So four to the third power is 64. Base raised to a power equals a number. So log base four, log base four of the number 64 is the power. On example B, log base nine of 729 is 3 because 9 cubed is 729. Here we have log base 2 of 1 over 32 is equal to the power negative 5. And lastly, log base 64 of 8 is going to be the 1 half power. Hopefully these are easy and you've recognized them from your previous course. Let's go backwards on this. We want to write the log, we want to take the log equation and rewrite that as an exponential equation. 5 cubed is 125. 625 to the fourth power is equal to 5, or you could rewrite that as the fourth root of 625. That would be acceptable as well. One half to the negative six power is 64, and we could do the same thing there. One half could be two to the positive six is 64, just to check yourself. And finally, two to the negative five power is one over 32. We just saw that in the previous example because 2 to the negative 5 power is 1 half to the 5th, and 1 half to the 5th power is 1 over 32. 
Moving right along, let's talk about the common log base 10. Logarithms with base 10 are called common logs, and the subscript is often dropped, so a logarithm statement like example 4 just means that we have base 10 to some power is going to give us 100. So if you rewrite the 100 as 10 to the second, when the bases are the same, the powers are equal. So log of 100 is 2. This one, log 10 to some power, is the square root of 10. That's the 10 to the half power. So our power is 1 half. Log base 10 of 1 over 1,000 is a power. What power of 10 is going to give us 1 1,000th? Well, that would have to be 10 to the negative 3 power would give us 1 over 1,000. So negative 3 here. And then this one, 10. Log base 6 of 6, this is power 1. So we're thinking 10 to the 1 power is what? Well, 10 to the first power is just 10. So easy if you understand the rules and the biconditional statement for our definition of a logarithm. I'm not going to use my graphing calculator on screen, but you can find log of 34 and a half. This is log base 10. And if you calculate that correctly, you should get something around 1.5378. In common log, log base 10 of 43 hundredths, I'm getting negative 0.3665. And then this one should give you an error. It's not possible. We can't take the log of a negative value. Logs aren't defined for negative values of x because the domain on a logarithm is only from 0 to infinity. You can think of the y-axis. If we take a sketch of it, the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. And log base 1, log base 10 of 1 is 0, so the point 1, 0 is on the graph. And logarithm is an increasing function, concave down, and we can make a statement, something along the lines of what we observe with the graph. Logarithms are not defined for negative values of x. <clears throat> The domain, the domain of the log function is from 0 to infinity. For example 6, let's evaluate each logarithmic expression, if possible, without using a calculator. In our first example, think about 2 to what power gives you 32. So we could rewrite that as 32 can be expressed as 2 to the fifth power. So my power that gives us 32 would be 5. The answer would be 5. 49 to some power is going to give us 7. I'm thinking about the square root of 49. That's 7. And the square root is the power 1 half. Log of 1 over 64 of 4 is going to be a power. I'm thinking 1 over 64 to what power gives me 1? Well, 64 is 4 to the third power, and 4 to the third power in the denominator would be 4 to the negative 3 power if we move that to the numerator. So this power is 1, 4 to the negative 3p power is 4 to the 1. So the power we're looking for, if we solve the expression up here, negative 3p is equal to 1, then the power is negative 1 third. So log of 1 64th of 4 would be the power negative 1 third. 
And here again, we see a non-example. 5 to the what power would give you negative 25? Well, nothing to any power is going to give us a negative value. So this one is not possible or it's undefined. We can't take the log of a negative value. Example 7 is calculator driven. So again, using your calculator, log base 3 of 15 is about 2.4650. Log base 4 of 58, 2.9290. Log base 35 hundredths of 8.4 is negative 2.0272. And log base 2.5 of 125 is about 5.2694. That's a messy 6, isn't it? 5.2694. Let's look at some practical applications. We use logarithms as a way to write um, order of magnitude on earthquakes. If you use your calculator and compute log of 3 times 10, that's a common log, I get 1.477. And log of 3 times 100, I get 2.477. And if you continue on in that pattern all the way to log of 3 times 10 to the 10 power, you get all the way up to 10.477. What's the pattern in the integers part? Well, the integers part is 1, 2, 3, and so forth up to 10. So the integer pattern is 1, 2, 3, up to 10. And the decimal part of the pattern is the same thing, 0 0.47712. So how many orders of magnitude greater is 3 times 10 to the 10 than 3 times 10 to the 1? Well, that would be... 10 minus 1, or 9 orders of magnitude greater. The Richter scale is the common scale we use for measuring earthquakes on a seismograph. This is the formula that we can use to measure the magnitude. So example 8 is asking us how many times more severe was the 2001 earthquake in India, which had a magnitude of 7.1, than the 1999 earthquake that happened in Greece. It had a magnitude of 5.9. So if we subtract the magnitudes, 7.9 minus 5.9, that would be the formula in the scale log of intensity 1 divided by intensity 2. So 7.9 minus 5.9 is 2. And if we think about the definition of logarithms, you understand this is the base. 10 to the second power is the intensity ratio. So the earthquake in India, we can say something like, therefore, the Indian earthquake is a hundred times, because 10 to the second is a hundred times greater than the Greek earth, than the Greek earthquake. Order of magnitude would be two. This is our order of magnitude here. And then one last example is comparing chemical acidity with the pH scale. So here's our formula for pH scale, and that's the scale that measures how acidic or how basic a substance ranks. The scale can range from 0 to 14, 
and 7 represents neutral, and each whole pH value below 7 is 10 times more acidic than the next higher value. So we are given balsamic, balsamic vinegar has a pH of 2.4, and a box of baking soda has a pH of 8.4, and we want to know what their hydrogen ion concentrations are. So this is the hydrogen ion. Going to go do a little bit of science here. So in the vinegar, we're going to compare the vinegar. Can't spell. To the soda. And the vinegar said we have 2.4, which is negative log of the hydrogen ion. So this is base 10, remember. And 10, we can divide the negative on both sides. So we could say 10 to the negative 2.4 is the hydrogen ion concentration. And using our calculator and converting that to scientific notation, 10 to the negative 2.4 is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. And working out the same exact idea for soda, baking soda is 8.4, and that should be equivalent to negative log of the hydrogen ion. So 10 to the negative 8.4 is what we're looking for. This becomes 10, 3.98 times 10 to the negative 9 moles per liter. So you can see the soda is six times in magnitude. And if we figure that out in part B, the vinegar compared to the soda, we have 10 to the negative 2.4 divided by 10 to the negative 8.4. And negative 2.4, when the bases are the same, we can subtract the negative and that's where I was getting 10 to the 6th power. So vinegar is 6 orders of magnitude greater than the soda. And I believe that finishes our lesson for 2.9, just a general review of using the log properties and some practical applications.